Hello and welcome to a RedCap training topic. This is Patrick from RedCap for VCU. Today's topic that we'll be covering is cool optional features. And some of the topics that we'll be covering in Red, uh, cool additional features are setting custom record labels, defining secondary unique fields, ordering the records by another field, and add a reason when making changes to existing records. Let's take a look at our RedCap project. Let's go into My Projects and into our project setup page. And these features are located in Additional Customizations under Enable Optional Modules and Customizations. Let's start with the first one in setting a custom record label. And for this one, you may append other data and or static text to any record name. You can use, for example, last name, first name when entered. It'll help display um, or pipe any information that's from the record to help uh, better organize your data and uh, just as a better view to uh, when looking through the drop-down list and cho when choosing records. Let's see an example of this. Say, for example, we want to use the variables last name and first name. And personally for ours, our first name label is named name, but it just can be different. All right, let's click into our record status dashboard. As you can see, last name, comma, first name in parentheses, just in case we need to look through our records and get a good overview of, uh, it's just a cool little uh, customization when looking through your records. Let's see if this is correct for our initial form. last name, first name. If you're ever unsure about your variable names as well, you can click into Modify Instruments. And as you can see, variable name is name and last name for last name. Okay, moving on up. Let's go back to our project setup page, see what other cool additional customizations there are. Next up is defining a secondary unique field. Uh, you can use this to specify a field as your secondary unique field. And this helps in entering data for a secondary unique fields on a former survey. Its value will be checked in real time to ensure it does not duplicate any values from another record. And another note is that text fields may be used, or only text fields may be used. Let's do another example of that. Say, for example, we use last name just to double check that that is the only unique, it uh, does not contain any duplicates. Go ahead and save. Let's say we try to enter a, a duplicate last name. Say, for example, West record. Let's see, how about this one? Okay, this one doesn't have an email. Alright, let's go ahead and edit this response and say last name is West. Okay, and it will give you a warning that says duplicate value. Current field is a secondary unique field of another uh, written the same variable, last name. So this value must be unique for all records and cannot be duplicated. And this is generally useful if you want to keep a certain help the kind of help the data per entry personnel um, from entering in duplicate values for fields that are supposed to be unique. Okay, and that can't happen, so let's just close that out. 
move on to our next additional customization. Next up in line is order the records by another field. Okay. And the default setup is that all records are ordered by their record name and displayed in the drop-down list. But you can also uh, order the value by a different uh, variable. Let's try this with last name. Okay, check this off. Choose your variable. And click Save. To test and see that this works, let's go into Add and Edit Records. And select Response. It's a bit jumbled, but you can see that it is alphabetized from C, R, W. And when you last saw it in the record, it was West that was first, and Ramirez that was second. This isn't usually good when you need to organize your drop-down list. It's a cool little feature as well, and you need to organize any numerical values as well. Okay, let's go out and go back into our project setup. No customizations. All right, this was already covered in another video. It will be posted in the link below for enabling field comment logs. But another video that was not really covered is data resolution workflow. But you you can always view this and view more details. And there's a brief overview of using data resolution workflow. And you can always enable that by clicking data re resolution workflow. And it's often called uh, data queries in clinical trials and studies. It can be used on any uh, on a data entry form for uh, finding data discrepancies. Moving on, let's go on to require a reason when making changes to existing records. And just as it sounds, it gives you a pop-up saying asking the data entry personnel to enter a reason whenever making a change to the record. And let's go ahead and test this out. Save. Let's say someone wants to change the email because they finally updated their email. And as you can see, there's the pop-up of please apply reason for data changes. Let's just say updated and save. Okay. Okay, let's go into our next customization in the list, data entry triggers. And for this one, it will also be posted in and be gone into further depth in our other topic. It will also be posted in the description below. The data entry trigger is an advanced feature and, and provides a way way for a red cap to trigger a call to a remote web. Okay. Okay, and you can read that yourself, but its uh, main purpose is for notifying other remote systems outside REDCap um, the moment a record or response is created or modified. And for the purpose, it may be trigger some kind of action by the remote website, such as making a call to the REDCap API. And that can be enabled later, and that will also be covered in a different video. Right, and yeah, 
might not really be you won't be able to see this as it's only displayed to super users is the dy dynamic data pool which will also be covered in a different topic well it's a special feature for importing data into RedCap from an external source system uh, it also provides an education process whereby RedCap users can approve all incoming data from the source system before it's officially saved in their RedCap project. And again, it can only be enabled by a RedCap administrator. This, along with the Twilio SMS and voice call service, can be enabled. Just contact your local RedCap administrator, depending on your university. Or as a quick button, you can also click on the RedCap administrator to send out an email to redcap at vcu.edu. Please be sure to mention your project name, your user ID as well. And a little bit of help would also be your project ID, which is located at the top, PID. Just in case you have a lot of project names that are labeled, very similarly labeled, just to help clear things up. Twilio SMS and voice call ser services um, that will be covered and demoed in depth in a later topic video. But let's go ahead and check out what that is. This what this description page will also be posted in the description below for viewing how to use Twilio SMS. It's uh, basically a way for a survey to be sent out to an individual's phone and they can take that survey um, through um, questions ranging from using uh, which will pose as a text message, SMS text message, question by question, or it will also be, can be read to the uh, participant as like a voice call survey. And as you saw, there was also compatibilities with it. Let's just go down and take a quick look at what steps are necessary to set up this Twilio and tell me more or how do I set this up and the three important steps to setting up your Twilio account would be to go to the Twilio.com website once your Twilio account has been created you must fund your account with some money and last option or last setup instruction is to purchase a phone number to be used with your RedCap project and this will be go into depth later in our other tutorial video. And this pretty much concludes our cool optional features. Feel free to visit our website at vic.cctr.bc.edu for more topics and feel free to post a comment for additional topics that you would like us to cover or recover and you can also view this at our home page, VCU CCTR Research Portal. And that would be under Research Electronic Data Capture. For any questions, feel free to post it on RedCap Support. Or again, you can also click on RedCap Administrator at our RedCap VCU page for any additional questions. And that pretty much covers our topic. Thank you for tuning in and have a good day.